Ho, 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 and a merry winter holiday season to you all. Why not just say Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa? Why say winter holiday season? Because we're respectful of everyone's customs at Butler, and this episode might be viewed in January. Oh, that makes sense. Mr. Director, roll that Campus Edge opening. <laughs> Welcome to the sixth and the last episode of Campus Edge for fall 2023. It's been ex an exciting semester and it's almost at an end. So Lainey, I presume you drive to campus? I do. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow will stop me from getting to class. That's good. But not everyone's vehicles are ready to battle our winter weather. Reporter Francisco Puente Takahasi has prepared a story on winterizing your car for those that need help during the colder months. With the winter season upon us, there are many things to worry about. And one that comes to mind is winterizing your own car. And today, I'm here to show you how to do just that. I am Francisco Puente Takahasi, reporting for Campus Edge. First thing when it comes to winterizing your car is checking your antifreeze levels. Antifreeze is important because, well, it's in the name. It keeps your engine from dropping too low in temperature. When checking your antifreeze, you want to look at the reservoir and check the markings. Make sure that there is a good amount in the reservoir and that it's the original color that you bought it in. Secondly, and what I personally think is the most important thing, is packing a winter safety kit. You can find a basic emergency kit like I have here in your local superstore, like Walmart. The kit should include the following. Gloves, jumper cables, a blanket, toe strap, an emergency poncho, a first aid kit, a flashlight with extra batteries, and lastly, a knife scraper and a brush or both of them combined, like I have here. Not last, but definitely not least, is adding repellent to your windshield. A product like rain -X will make scraping ice off your window a lot easier by simply applying it to all your windows when clean and dry. Doing this is a much better alternative than to just pouring hot water onto icy windows. The fast change in temperature can cause them to crack. You and I both know we don't want that. With these tips, hopefully you're prepared for the winter season. I am Francisco Puente Takahasi, reporting for Campus Edge. Francisco certainly knows about his vehicles. I thought I was prepared for winter, but even I learned a few things. We all should be open to learning new things. For example, when you think of gas station employees, what comes to mind? Um, some overweight guy in a greasy shirt and a baseball cap? Not so with my friend Haven Schroeder. She works at a gas station to pay her way through college, and I don't think she owns a single baseball cap. Have you ever stopped into your local gas station to fill up on drinks and snacks and wonder if you're safe? Butler student Haven Schroeder has first-hand insight on how working at a gas station makes her feel. Um, so the highs, I think, when I first started, I got like really good at people skills. I can talk to people a lot easier. Um, some of the lows, I would say, are the really creepy people that come in and some of the like old men that hit on me, I guess. I don't really like that. I feel safe working at this gas station because it's like on the main street, so there's a lot of people that come through, and it's like out in the open, kind of. My favorite part of working here is my coworkers. They're really nice to me. Um, it's also a really easy job. All I have to do is just give people money, clean things, so it's pretty easy. With the common stereotype of sketchiness and how uncomfortable a gas station may seem, some truth comes to light. My take on the stereotype that gas stations are sketchy, I believe is true for some. One time I got a birthday invitation to um, some 40 year old's birthday party and he asked me to wear a swimsuit. I was very uncomfortable with that. And a lot of the old men, they just call me like, hey gorgeous, which I think that's like an old man thing, but I just like kind of get creeped out by it. Recently, the past couple of months, we've had to deal with a lot of theft. Like, I've worked here for almost a year, and only these past two months I've had to deal with that. Like, people stealing candy bars or, like, sodas from the soda machines or pizzas. So, really, at night when I have to close, it does get pretty sketchy because that's when all the, like, weird people come in. But nothing's ever happened to me, so. Definitely don't, um, like, take things personal because there's a lot of customers that come in here, like, very angry about stuff. Even if it's really little, you just gotta 
not take it to heart, I guess. Ultimately, you may run into some uncomfortable situations anywhere you are, but it's how you handle those situations that determine your safety. For BCTV and Campus Edge, I'm Sam White. When we return to the Campus Edge, we'll present more insights into the workings of our community. It's sure to be entertaining. So make some popcorn and come back. We'll add an extra spot to the break so you have enough time. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. See, I told you you'd have enough time to make popcorn and not miss a single thing. Now I'm hungry for popcorn. Anyways, I produced this next pass package featuring our very own Francisco Puente Takahasi. Earlier we talked about stereotypes. Sam, do you imagine mass communication students are different than other students? Well, I doubt that many history majors have their own radio shows or newspaper bylines, but we do have a lot in common with most students. You'd be surprised. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Lainey Wolf. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a mass communication student? Well, I'm one myself, but I followed my friend around Francisco for a whole day. Here's what he does. Usually wake up around seven o'clock. I can't believe this package. Okay, ready? I usually do homework, um, look for some campus edge stories to do. I have my either my applied radio or applied TV class which are both very fun. After my applied classes, I'll usually go straight home. My name is Lady Wolf with Campus Edge, signing off. One thing our mass communication students share with other majors are internships. Internships are a great way to combine college credit with real world experiences. The problem is getting one. That's not a problem if you know where to look. Campus Edge reporter talked with our campus career expert, Alitra Cheney Prophet, to learn all about our internships. Getting a job in your degree field after college is always a challenge, but with the help of Butler's very own Alitra Cheney Prophet, you can get in contact with companies in no time. I spoke with her to see how she does her magic as the Director of Career Services here at Butler. So I meet with students so I can get a better understanding of kind of what their needs are, what they're looking for, and, um, and so if they could send me a resume, that's just helpful for me to pass on to employers as I'm trying to help set up that internship or that job shadow. Um, it may not be as uh, formal for a job shadow. Um, 
but basically you just touch and base with them and then me trying to secure an employer um, that will work with them or who would allow them to come and uh, shadow. Um, so they, um, it was a, it was really a great way that we we engaged in this. They they knew exactly what kind of students they were looking for, and they gave me a criteria. So I worked with the registrar's office to pull those students, sent them a special invitation, um, and then we had an event on our Andover campus where they came and they actually um, interviewed students on the spot. Um, kind of screened and picked who they wanted and then called them in for um, the orientation and stuff like that. And the good thing about that is... Our talk was very illuminating. And if you need help getting a job in your field after leaving Butler, visit our office at the Andover campus in room 5060. Just one more spot break for the semester. It's a long one. So you can either get go into the bathroom or get a snack break, but not both. Of course you could hit the pause button, but that would be cheating. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Sam, I know you sell vintage clothing outside of class, but if you had to pick a different job, what would it be? Something that's out of the ordinary, where I can make my own hours, meet interesting people, and have fun. I think our next story might fulfill all of your requirements. Reporter Tess Hargrove interviewed Dan Ross, whose job is fun, but can be a bit wet and smelly. Now you've got me interested. Let's find out. Have you ever wondered where you could take your furry little friends to get a nice cleaning? Well, lucky for you, Happy Hound Grooming has you covered. Located in 2819 West 4th Avenue, Dan Rose will make sure your dog is barking for joy. So I used to do livestock grooming, uh, showed cattle on the weekends for people, and I did that for about 10 or 12 years. And then just several years ago, just started doing some, some people around the uh, neighborhood needed dog haircuts. And I was like, well, I've got some dog clippers. And so I did a few of their dog haircuts. And a lot of people were like, wow, you did a really good job. And um, several people uh, said, they're like, wow, you, you, have you ever done this before? And I said, no. They're like, you look, it looks better than some of the places I've gone to in Wichita. So I was like, well, I think I'll just invest in a little bit of stuff and start doing it on the side. And then next thing I know, it's uh, within about six or eight months, it grew into pretty much a full-time business. And so well, the, the big challenge is when I first started this, um, I wasn't real confident in my abilities, so one of the things I would do is just take dogs that like were banned from PetMart, PetSmart, you know, like people would call and say, hey, PetSmart won't groom my dog anymore, would you try? And so I've been really working with those dogs and, and they're all, you know, just kind of special. They need just a lot of um, comfort and a lot of um, just patience. It has been crazy busy, uh, um, pretty much. And I'm about to put on Facebook an advertisement to let people know that, you know, hey, get your dog in. Because uh, the week before Christmas, a lot of people will call and say, hey, I need to get my three dogs in uh, by next week. And you're like, I, I don't have space. And so, uh, so yeah, this is the busiest time. Um, July 4th also uh, was really busy. For the dog groomer part, I like that all, almost all of these dogs, when they come in, are very, very anxious and I like to be kind of the person that keeps them calm and kind of, you know, good job, you're doing a good job, you know, you can do this. And so that when they leave the door, leave out the door, they're not so, um, you know, anxious and uh, wow, that was a horrible process. You know, they, they want to be like, hey, that wasn't too bad. I can do that again. Uh, from a non-dog groomer perspective, one of the things that I really like is um, just about every day, uh, someone comes to this town um, needing their dog groomed that's not from El Dorado. And so it's, and usually those people end up going and hanging out here in El Dorado, you know, going to some of the restaurants or some of the shopping places or, you know, the hardware store or something. They'll come back and they'll be like, wow, uh, that Willie's downtown, that's a great place to eat. Or, wow, I never knew that you had this uh, clothing shop or stuff like that. So it makes me feel good to know that, um, it, and that's pretty much every day. Just, uh, I had um, someone yesterday that came in and uh, they're from a different town. and. 
they were like, oh, we'll just hang out here. And so it's nice to know that while I'm grooming, their, the, the reason they're shopping in El Dorado is because of me, because I'm grooming the dog. So come on down to Happy Hound Grooming. I'm sure you and your furry little friend will be jumping for joy. I'm Tess Hargrove reporting for Campus Edge. See you later. And that concludes Campus Edge for Fall 2023. Do we have to end it so soon? I know it's tough, but we're already gearing up for some incredible stories for the spring semester and we're bringing back an audience favorite. Stay tuned. And if you want to see this or any other episode of the Campus Edge, check them all out on our YouTube channel, Butler Student Media, their permanent online home. To all our amazing viewers out there, thank you for joining us on this journey. This has been The, the Campus, Campus Edge. Edge. Thank <laughs> you.